Yo, what's up? This your boy Derek Branch here at strike 7 sportscom This is another episode of the strike 7 Sports Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, Brian Bada. Um, Louis Elton Seabury, he'll be um be on soon. Um, but this is another episode of the strike 7 Sports Podcast. So we're gonna jump right into it. Um this week, uh well this past weekend, it was the uh Super Bowl, Super Bowl fifty six, the Rams won the Super Bowl, their first uh, world championship since uh, 1999, pretty much 20 years ago. They won that Super Bowl, I remember it. I was in a like, freshman in high school, showing my age, but I remember that team, pretty explosive, just like this one. Um, good wide receivers, running back, all that. Whole nine yards, they won the Super Bowl. Pretty much the same type of way with Great players on both sides of football. But what I want to get into is how this team was built. Um, a lot of people are starting to see, hear a lot of conversations online about not being, you know, this as uh, this method of building the team like this to win a Super Bowl as being a little too risky, a little too dangerous. I wrote about this in an article what, a few days ago about how this team was constructed. I just want to just go provide a quick breakdown of the information I've gathered on how this team came together. It just didn't start this year. It started a few years ago. It's 2019, 2018. Well, matter of fact, I would say 2017 because they have made the playoffs every year since Sean Bay has been there since 2019, that year that San Francisco went to the Super Bowl. But they have pretty, they have pretty much been in the thick of it. And I'm just going over some of these moves the Rams, the moves the Rams have made over these years, these past couple of years. They've added, um, they gave up two first round draft picks for Jalen Ramsey, a cornerback. Then they restate, they signed Jalen Ramsey to a new deal. They uh, traded up, they gave up, they gave away draft picks for Matthew Stafford, two first rounds for Matthew Stafford. And that's with, and that's at the time they, they they signed Jared Goff, who they picked first in the draft to a new deal. They unloaded that deal, give it to Detroit, and they got Matthew Stafford, and give up those draft picks. They also traded for um, Von Miller, give up picks for Von Miller. You signed Ashawn Robinson on your defensive line. You signed Leonard Floyd, Leonard Floyd from the Chicago Bears. Then you re-signed and paid him. Um, then you bring in Odell Beckham Jr. to the fold. And um, on top of that, you bring in uh, Eric Weddle, who played pretty well, given the fact that he was on the street, you know, a few days, well, a year, a few years ago, for pretty good safety. So, with that being said, I just want to ask you, if you were a general manager, Brian, would you utilize this method to build an NFL, a Super Bowl contender? If you was in charge. It depends on uh, what situation I'm in. If I'm like in win now mode or if I'm like rebuilding or retooling, tool, then it may be a different situation. But yeah, I love what the Rams did. Uh, and also they're in Los Angeles, so that's a pretty nice destination for yeah. free agent uh, to join up. But yeah, I love what the Rams did. They went all in. They were aggressive in the moves they made. They didn't back down. And I think that's a big reason why they're champions. It's hard to win in any sport without taking risks, taking chances. And I remember, unless I really like, really good point, I'll take players over picks any day. Bucky Brooks, you, you probably heard that. Yeah. So I agree with that. Uh, and so I love the Rams did. They went all in, and I think that that's the number one reason. Obviously, they had a little bit of luck, but, they all, but you create your own luck, too by uh, working hard and putting yourself in a position to be successful. And I think that's why the champs uh, give them credit. Yeah, um, I guess it was worth it. You know, they got a Super Bowl championship from it after all the moves that they made. But I don't know if I would have gave away all of my picks, man. You know, it's just, it's a lot. They don't pick again in the first round to 2027, I believe. You gave up two first rounders for Jalen Ramsey. You gave Denver a few picks. You gave up two first rounds for Matthew Stafford. 
I don't know if I would have did all that, man. Like, I think I'm, I mean, it, it really don't mean anything right now, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have rushed to pay the uh, Jared Goff, man. I would have, I would have made those moves, but I would have tried to keep my picks and get, and, try, and build through the draft because if you have a good scouting department, you should be able to find good cornerbacks in the draft, no matter which round it is. Um, I would have made that move for Stafford though. That's the I, I pretty pretty much would have did that. I understand the move for Von Miller. Stafford signed over Odell Beckham Jr. But I want to give up all those draft picks, man. I, I, I would rather build through the draft and save that money, save that cap space to sign for agents. You know, cheap talent, um, and just don't be tied up to all these contracts. You know what I'm saying? But I understand what the Rams did. They went for it. It worked out. Um, L.A. is not a bad market to be in. And... They won the championship. And also, they play in a really tough division. So, you got to give them credit for that because you got Russell, you got Kyle Shanahan, Colin Murray. And they lost to the 49ers and Arizona in the regular season. They still they were able to get over the hump. But I give them credit for that, though, man. But I, I wouldn't have gave up my draft picks like that because this stuff is risky, man. Because what if this stuff falls? What if this stuff fails? You know what I'm saying? Then you stuck with some expensive talent, expensive players with no draft picks to get rid of them. Well, you have to get, you get rid of them, but you don't have nothing to get back. To get get those picks back, you got to get rid of them. But credit to the Rams, man. They made they made um risky decisions and it worked. So a Super Bowl title it was worth it. And another thing I would like to say is um I just think that they're under pressure, you know. They just moved from St. Louis to Los Angeles. You go into a time where the Lakers are pretty much the number one draw. You got USC, USC football there. They're pretty big. Um, Clippers got a, a base, a fan base to a certain extent. So you got to, I mean, I guess the ownership came down and said, hey, look, man, you got to make moves. You're trying to sell tickets. We got a new stadium. We got to get us a Super Bowl so that way. A Super Bowl quickly, so that way we can have a, establish a fan base, establish a brand in Los Angeles, and they made that happen. So, I mean, people, a lot of people, I'm mean, hearing people online on the radio, our radio, you know, podcasts, they're saying that this is a one hit wonder team. I disagree um, because the NFC is going to be really weak next season. You know, for right now, for based on what we see right now, um, I think the biggest threat is uh, the 49ers. 49ers and Green Bay, if they decide, if Aaron Rodgers decides to, to come back. So, I think they can run it back, in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, I think they can run it back, too. Like you said, the NFC is weak. Tom Brady probably, we believe, going to retire. I still think there's a slight chance to come back, but uh, he's probably not going to be back, and even if he does come back, they'll beat the uh, Bucks again. Yeah, their main threats are Aaron Rodgers, uh, Green Bay, if he comes back, the 49ers, and then maybe Seattle. Yeah, they maybe. Have, they have Russell Wilson, but that, and Pete Carroll, but I don't know about the rest of the team. And then if maybe, like, s some of these teams that really have good defense, but don't have a quarterback, get a really good quarterback, then we can see that. But yeah, the, if I had some bet money, I'd probably say they're the favorites to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. If I had to bet money today. Yeah. Um, is a, is a, um, least pad to resist, resistant right now for the NFC, for the Rams. Um, all, the, all the action is in the, in the AFC, in my opinion. But we'll see. All right, so we're going to, um, Segue to this next topic on the NFL, and that's our uh, way too early picks of the top the top five teams in each conference, NFC and NFC, NFC and the AFC. So I'm gonna just go ahead first with this one. My top five teams, my way too early top five teams in the AFC right now are the Chiefs, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Buffalo Bills, the Baltimore Ravens, and the Tennessee Titans. 
In regards to the NFC, I'm going to go LA Rams, San Francisco 49ers, Green Bay Packers, Dodge Cowboys, and for this fifth team, I'm leaning between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and I think this is going to be a real, this might be a sleeper team, but I think it's going to be really good. The Minnesota Vikings. I think they're going to make the next, they're going to take the next step with this uh, new head coach, uh, it's Kevin O'Connell from, yeah. from the LA Rams. I think he may be the guy that can, um, I would say, work with Kirk Cousins and work with his decision making with that offense. The pieces are there on both sides of the football. The pieces are there. Um, Sean McVay, uh, another Sean McVay uh, clone. He got one in uh, in uh, Cincinnati. Now he got one in um, Minnesota. So I, I expect him to be really, really good this year. He may give the Packers a run for the um, for the NFC North, but that's on my five teams right there. What do you got? Yeah, I probably I'm not sure if I disagree with anything. I don't know. Did you have the Chargers in there? No, I didn't put the Chargers. No. I, I could see them getting into that top five. Uh, Brandon Staley will have to figure out how to win more games. And they have to pick and choose when he goes for two. But I understand he wants to be aggressive. I, and then in the NFC, I'm trying to see. You had the Niners. Who, who else? Was, I'm trying to see who else I think uh, that can be good. It's kind of tough. Um, you, you didn't have the Washington football team? No. I agree. They're, they get a quarter. There are a few teams. Same thing with the Panthers. I think that uh, the Panthers at least had a really good defense. If they get a quarterback, I think they could a real like a veteran. I don't think a young guy can come in there and take the league by storm. But I think a veteran can help them get into that conversation. But, How's your boy come in, man? There you go. I agree. <laughs> I mainly agree with most of what you said. You do? Let's, uh, yeah. Let's see what this guy got to say. Yeah, but I don't see it going through, man. It ain't going through. He ain't popping up. Man. I said it again. Uh, All right, there he is. What up, man? Hey, how you doing? All right, yeah. you good? Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready, man. Hey, hey. So what we was talking about in the beginning? I want to ask you. Um, we talked about the Rams and how they built the team pretty much through. Sacrificing their uh, draft, their draft picks, in order to build a Super Bowl contender roster, and sign, you know, a couple of free agents here and there. I want to ask you, would you use that if you was a general manager of NFL team? Would you utilize that strategy to build a Super Bowl a contender? Um, 
Well, it depends what type of team that I had. Like, like they, they had a team bunch full of veterans and everything. They felt like they had the, the core to do that. And when you had a core to do that, and you have they had the ability to, and the flexibility to take on such uh, salaries and all that, then, then you, okay, you, I can see why they did it. But I'm, it, it would depend on my roster. They had the roster and they had the flexibility to do it. So when you have the money and the flexibility, then – Okay, it makes sense, but it, it was a big risk too, though, because if they didn't win a championship, everybody would have just said they was they was just they they went they went um big time and didn't didn't make it. So if they made it and they won, so it's a successful blueprint that I wouldn't mind using. But it depends. Like for me personally, if I was Jim, I like my teams like with Jimmy Johnson. He like anybody everybody to be twenty five and younger. So. We like I like my teams young. I like them young. I don't like the old. I don't like too many old heads on the team because they think they know everything. I mean, I need kids that's ready to learn. Well, grown men that are ready to learn type thing. That, so I prefer to have a younger team, but going old gets you uh, titles and so so the Rams won. So. I mean, they weren't that old. I mean, like they were like thirty. Matthew Stafford like was the oldest. Like, Andrew Whitworth like forty. He was the oldest guy on the team, but I was telling uh, Brian, I prefer to build it through the draft, man. Build it through the draft. Utilizing my scouting department. Um, everybody on the rookie deal. My quarterback, you know, he young. And we just save money. I just, I just save money. Save that money from, save that cap space money. That cap space money. And pay them guys. You know, and it may, it make a, a move here and there. The only move I, would, I like, I like what they, they would, I like, I, I would have did. It was trade for Stafford. That's when I would start making my moves. When I, when I trade for Stafford, pick up Von Miller. Um, I like that, uh, that Leonard Floyd move. That decision, decision to resign him. That was a good move. Picking up Ashawn Robinson. Robinson. That was a good move. They went and got Odell Beckham Jr. Let me ask y'all this. They had, they already had a Van Jefferson. They had um, Cooper Cup. Robert Woods, Tyler Higby, who didn't even play. It was already stacked at on offense. So y'all thought they, they needed Odell? Really needed him? Well, for this run they did, because Robert Woods was out. Yeah. Higby ended up getting missing the Super Bowl. But uh, it's going to be, I don't know if you saw it on ESPN, they're looking at free agent destinations. They had to potentially down to the Chiefs. And Austin Adele is going to be coming off a torn AC set. I could see him that like come back if he's willing to accept a minimum for a one year. They make a run without him, and maybe they can use him in the Super Bowl. They'll have Robert Woods back. So, uh, I, or I could see another team. It also depends on what he decides. But they needed him for the run. Do they leave him long term if they have to pick up another young guy via the draft? Yeah. He's kind of like the way they. Donald said what happened to Robert Woods. Robert Woods had a, a torn ACL injury during um, practice drill, a nine contact drill during practice. He got he was injured. So Odell came right around that time. So it was a, a good move. But the team stacked, man. That's a, a really good football team. I don't think – I think they can run it back. I told Brian I think they can run it back. Man, what do you think, uh, Leo? I think they run it back, man. Uh, Talented enough to where they can do it, and they have enough space to try to do it. But the question is, do you keep Odell or do you keep Ron Miller? Because if they don't have room to keep both, that one might have to go. But I think they try to squeeze it in and keep both. Yeah. And then the question is, does Aaron Donald come back? Bro, I think he come back. I don't know where that, I don't know where that rumor came from. Man. It, it came, it, it dropped right on the Super Bowl. I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't think he comes back. That dude's still young, man. Well, we'll see. Go ahead. I could see him retiring if, but I've heard a rumor and that he may want to get a new contract that will entice him to come back. But he's thirty. He's won a Super Bowl. I'm not saying he will, but if he if he retires, we've seen it with some guys like Patrick Willis. He retired around thirty. Like the long term effects of it, some people don't think it's worth it if you can get your money. So 
I, I think he comes back if he gets a good deal, but I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, retires. All right, so you got another comment. What happens with Robin Woods now? I think he comes back too. Yeah, he's, I mean, I'm trying to look at his contract situation. But yeah, he comes back. The question of what Robert Woods, Robert Woods, the uh, question is, what does Adele do? Von Miller, that's another one, but I think he ends up staying. But I wouldn't be so surprised if that leaves because he may just want a different situation and what may want more money. But he remember, he's going to be coming off of a torn ACL. So the Rams, well, I mean, they want to just use him later on in this, and he's fine with that and just rehab it in L.A. and just be part of that team. Again, I could see that, but uh, I could also see him just wanting a different challenge. He's able to get long-term money. Maybe he'll probably, this year probably take up, come back to another team. Like the team, for example, that'd be a good fit. I mean, that's a lot of football to go around, though. Yeah, but I think, I think Andy Reid's smart enough to figure it out. I'm talking about in L.A., man. Robert Woods, Odell, Cup. Yeah. Higby, Jefferson. I mean, that's a good that's a good squad. That's a good roster, man. But yeah. um anyways, um you got anything else, um, Leo? Yeah, I was I was about to say, uh Odell, uh keep in mind his days of you talk about a payday, his days of being among the highest paid receiving the league are done. Yeah. And he's not like and I know he's still a great player and he's still like He's still a guy that's – his age isn't that bad. It's only he's in his 20s. So he's still age-wise, teams like that. But it's shown that, okay, is he a number one receiver? He hasn't won anything as a number one. Keep that in mind. He never won anything as a number one guy. And teams are not going to pay him to be a number one guy. They're going to pay you to be a number two or number three. Because he goes to the Chiefs, he's, a, he's – I think he's a four on the Chiefs. That's fair. Yeah. He's a four. Behind Hardman, Hill, and Kelsey, he's a four. So the question is, do you want to run this back and be a and be a, a three? Or do you wanna do you wanna uh go to another team? And I think he want at this point it's about winning because he made all the money. Yeah. He got to be and D V hit that like I just said, he's not getting another payday. With all due respect to Odell, you're not getting another payday. So he might as well go to the best situation. You want to keep winning championships. Odell always talks about winning championships. And this time, I think he could, you know, he tore his ACL, so he wanted on the field, like, at the end. But I think he wants the next year that, that motivated to get back. So I think the Rams, I know it's early on, but they'd be my favorite to go back it went, with, a, with a healthy roster. And assume Odell is, is important. It's, assume Odell comes back 100% because I feel like the offense changed when Wood got hurt. People thought it was for the worst of the team. But when Odell came, he's fitting in seamlessly, in my opinion. Yeah. Seamlessly. You didn't hear, I, he wasn't, you didn't, you know, you listen to a lot of drum around Odell. I don't think we heard it. We didn't really hear that much drama. Y'all noticed that? Yeah, I noticed. Very little drama. So salute to that man. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Also, we had talked about uh, our uh, way too early top five teams in the um, NFC and the AFC for next season. My top five was in the AFC, I got Chiefs, the Bengals, the Ravens, and the Titans. NFC, I got uh, Rams, 49ers, Packers, the Cowboys. And for that fifth spot, I'm on the fence between Tampa Bay and Minnesota. I think Minnesota's going to come up next season with this new head coach, given the talent that they have right now. What do you think? Think like I, I like your top five. You see, but you have Minnesota in there. I'm, I'm, it's a toss up between Minnesota and Tampa Bay, man. I think Tampa Bay can find a quarterback. I think they'd be right back in it. Uh, I like your top five. I really, I do. I uh, I do think that there's gonna be a few teams in there that maybe not in transition, but it'll be in maybe a re. Not rebuilding situation, reload, but I don't. We got to see what the roster look like. Like I said, after the rates and draft and everything. But for my, for me, my top five, I would have. I want to put, I want to put the Chiefs at one, because I feel like talent wise, they were 
still the best team. But I feel like they didn't finish when it mattered the most this season. And usually the Chiefs teams finish. They finish. They didn't finish like they did in the past. Number two, I'm going to go with the Bills. I really think the Bills is up there. Like, I think people are forgetting about them because they lost their the division around early. And I feel like they're going to come back. My, th- my um, real quick, the going to 3 through 5 I'll say my third team, I'm going to go with the uh, Rams. And then number four, it's hard with DB. I like the Vikings pick, but I just don't know. I ain't seen with Kirk Cousins. I like Kirk Cousins a lot, but I just don't know. If he's a quarterback, if he's O'Connell's guy, that's a question. So I can't put them in the top five. I know the Bengals at four because why not? They just made they just made the uh, championship. They just made the championship and lost in a close game. And number five, <sighs> y'all, this team faded down the stretch, but when they had a healthy quarterback, they they did a lot of damage this year. I'm a, and I think they fixed their defense and they become a lead again the Baltimore Ravens. People are not talking about them. They they got a new defensive coordinator. They hired that guy. I know Brian's really good with uh, – what's his name? Brian, who they I, hired from, from Michigan? Mike McDonald, he, uh, he, he was with – you're talking about the Ravens, right? Correct. Yeah, Mike McDonald, he was with uh, John Harbaugh as their linebackers coach. Then he went with Jim Harbaugh to be the Michigan's D.C. Now he came back to the half. Sounds good to me. Uh, should be interesting. Should be an interesting off season. We possibly gonna see quarterback movement, but we're gonna find out for sure next month. Fred Shapiro start March 16th. Um, combine, I think is, I think at the, the, at the end of the month, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll find out. All right. So moving right along, our next topic: the Kyle Murray um, debacle down in uh, Arizona. Um, last week, there was a report that came out that uh, Kyle Murray went on his social media, all of his social media accounts, and uh, his platforms, and removed everything that's Arizona Cardinals related to his uh, on his social media with the team. So the uh, days after that happened, um, some more reports came out about him about Murray being selfish um not really all in on the team um another report came from i think it was chris morrison is that uh he puts his headphones on in at the uh in the locker room and just uh talk to his girlfriend sometime not even not even interacting with the team all those other things that are going on and i got to pull it up right here on my screens that uh well, a few days ago well, yeah, two days ago, Murray came out and, um, I guess, tried to defend himself or of these uh, reports that uh, came out. Got to pull it up right here. All right. Quote, I play this game for the love of it. My teammates, everyone who has helped me get to this position that believed in me and to win championships, Murray wrote. All, all this nonsense, this is not what I'm about. Never has been, never will be. Anyone who has never stepped between those lines with me have, that has, stepped, never, that has never stepped between those lines with me knows how hard I go. Love me or hate me, but I'm going to continue to grow and get better. End quote. That came from Colin Murray. Statement he put out, um, defending himself. So, I want to ask y'all. What do you think this is all about with uh, Kyle Murray removing, uh, you know, Arizona Cardinal stuff from his uh, social media? An extension, or he just he wants to get traded, or he wants to, you know, just move on? I think this is the main thing that's about him going. I think one last year of his contract, but they'll probably pick up his option. Yeah. So he'll probably have a few more years left, at least, with the Cardinals. If he gets paid, then this is really a non-story. 
Uh, but since he hasn't gotten paid, this is going to be a big story. And uh, the nothing Cliff Kingsbury, or we don't know if he's going to be uh, the coach after next season. He and the general manager, Todd, both have their contracts. They're the last year of the contract. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Cardinals do. Uh, some people think he could get traded. Uh, but the way I look at it, it's if he gets paid or they, they figure out a plan on when they're going to pay him, then this will basically be a non-story. Uh, but it's interesting to see some of the stuff about his body language and all that stuff. I think but when you're winning, you some you, you, you usually everything goes well. When you're losing, some, it's all right to be upset. This song it's you how you can should control your emotions. So I mean, this is really to me a non-story until, unless if uh, he gets unless like we hear more and it keeps on lingering on. But I, I really want to love to hear from Tyler like on their first time when it can or the first time in front of the media that will tell me a lot about it. But until then, to me, this is really a non-story. So I want to ask you this, dude. Don't you don't think? Don't you think this is kind of? I'm a little older here, but and I know this is the the, the social media age and it's today's athlete. It's the way they act now. It's got this to me. It just sounds kind of childish to do this, man. Because you're the court. You're the number one pick. You got him to the playoffs. You been you played pretty well your first year, your second year, and your third year. You got into the playoffs. Almost had the number one seed in the NFC. I don't think it should have to come. It should it should come down to this, to where they're on the fence about giving you an extension. So you go to your social media and erase everything Cardinals related. I mean, I think you should have that much cachet, much that much swagger within that organization, to where you get with your agent and tell them you're ready for a new deal. You know, instead of you going to the social media route, route and do it. Just be straight up with them and say, hey, look, I'm ready for a new... I, de- I believe I deserve an extension. You know? Because where else are they going to go? You know what I'm saying? You're going you gonna to mor- you gonna bomb a season and try to move on from this guy? You know? This guy is pretty, it's a pretty good quarterback, man. I think, and I know there's a lot of teams that would love to pay, pay this guy to be their starting quarterback. You know what I'm saying? And if yeah. and this this is a situation. The Cardinal situation is interesting to watch because I think people talk about the Cowboys being Sean Payne's destination. Don't forget about the Arizona Cardinals, man. Because they, I think, I think they're gonna take a step back next season. In my opinion, Clean, Kingsbury's gonna get fired. If they start off really bad, he may get fired through, through midway through the season. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be one of those destinations where Sean Payne can end up at, man. You know. So I don't think it should come down to where he, you know, remove everything from the, everything Cardinals related from the social media, man. It's just kind of childish to me. What do you think? I mean, I feel like I mean, yeah, in a way, but I mean, I really don't. Again, unless if he, if there's more to it. That we that we just don't know. I, I really don't think this is that big of a story. You don't think so? I don't. I but really you got him. You got. Hey, you got to look at this though, man. You, when athletes do that stuff, man, when they unfollow the team and all that, you got to look into it, man. But a lot of players do this all yeah. the time too. So I mean, I, I, look until we hear from him. If it, we if did, we put out a statement. No, but I need to hear him. I want to. Oh, say vocally. Him. Yeah, okay. that that let me know more than we need to know. But yeah, I, I I do agree with your point that Sean Payton, if he decides to return to coaching, that the Cowboys won't automatically be his number one. He'll have options, so he could go to the Cardinals. I could see that up in the Seattle, the Panthers, Seattle, Seattle Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs. If Reed retires, what makes Reed you think? What make, dude, what makes you think they want to reach out to him? Eric B. Enemy? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Eric B. Enemy or Sean Payton? Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but I, I think Andy Reid will stay till his contract expires in 2025. So that's why I don't see that. But yeah, if, if that job somehow opened up, no doubt about it. The Chargers, the Chargers are, one, are the one 
to me that are, I think that's the number one destination for him. Yeah. Or the Cardinals, in a way, because he can have not only he can have control of the personnel. That's in my opinion why I don't think the Cowboys are automatic luck. Because why? How do we know Jerry Jones is going to give that up? <laughs> I think I believe in it, so I see it. But yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to monitor. But again, I really don't think this is that big of a story as people are making it out to be. Uh, one other interesting side note: he he had in the past talked about how much he wants to play baseball. So I'm not saying he's going to go back to get to the MLB, but I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. Let's put it that way. If this sure. if he feels like this football thing isn't working out. Go ahead, go ahead, Leo. My bad for the uh, connection issues, guys. Um, I, w- I was still listening to uh, my other uh, device, what you all were saying. Um, I, when you say football is not working out, I don't uh, think that's if that's an equation that that you can really uh, um, associate with Kyle Murray because trust me, it's worked out for him so far. Um, these guys, these guys want to is the quarterback in the game? Is he probably the best, one of the best guys under 25? He's uh, is it in that class. And we got he's a, um, a threat to a threat to score anytime he's on the field with his legs or with his arm. Uh, the guy is also very talented. So you all know we all know he can play baseball. He's a first round top, a, a, not just a first round guy, a top ten guy. A team invested, the A's invested a top ten pick in him. So, and I think that personally. This stems from the fact that he thinks that they think he's he he, he, was, he thinks that they view him as the scapegoat. Like he's, you know what, we're gonna put all the since he's a franchise guy and he even put up a dud against the Rams. I think that playoff game just really made it ugly. If that makes sense, y'all. Like that really murked the well. That made it to where he's like no. And so now they're trying to get back. I think they will they'll they'll find a way to get him back. And I think that. He'll be back. On, he'll be back on the roster. He'll be back, not on the roster. He'll be back like in terms of big chemistry with them when they give him that big contract to stay for years to come, a juicy nice contract. But I think uh, I think he gets a market set, market resetting contract. And I, and he, we see these contracts up every year with Josh Allen just got the most recent one. I think he gets another one. I got like a. I would give him a ten year contract. And I know, I know, mobile guys like him. Like chick not to last long. Like you see, like a Vix, the Vix of the world. Like they don't last long. The time they have a prime a consistency. I think that he's built with his arm and like a Russell Wilson type to last long in this league. So I would say they probably you for for the sake of their franchise, you did draft this guy with the first overall pick. You need to make sure he's happy. Yeah, that's true. Man, it's just I would. I, I told Brian this. I said I wouldn't have done that. If I was him, I would have went, you know, to my agent. If this, if his, if his agent tells him to do this, I just think it's weird to me, man. It just, it's just today's athlete, man. It just that's what they do. That's what athletes do now. They go to social media, unfollow the team. You know what I'm saying? Put out these uh cryptic like posts that people gotta, you know, decipher. You know. I, I wanna did that. I just went to the I just went to the management man. I would got my I got with my agent. I said, hey, look, man, I want a new deal. I wanna be here. I'm your franchise QB, I'm your number one pick. Pay me like I'm a um a franchise quarterback. Pay me like a team like a guy that you believe that could lead you to a Super Bowl. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't want, you don't believe I'm the guy, send me to send me to somewhere where they're gonna appreciate me and my skills. Straight up. Trade me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to put out no cryptic posts. You know, don't follow the team. Just let me go. You know? But we'll see. All right, man. That's all we have for y'all for right now, man. Give us a like, comment, subscribe. If you listen to this through YouTube, uh, give us a subscribe to the channel. Let us know your favorite of these topics we talk about, NFL-related. Listen to this through Apple, uh, Spotify. Give us a five-star rating. Leave your reviews. Also, check out Strike7Sports.com for his content on NFL. NBA and much more. Have a blessed night. Peace. We out.